It's time to relax with the offspring. Good morning, right. Dexter. Good morning. Good morning. Now, today oh, I have yeah. my John Fogarty shirt on. I know you had your John Ooh. Fogarty shirt on yesterday. I, I, I did. It reminded me that I needed to wear mine. Uh, John Fogarty gave me this shirt, by the way. It's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, All right. It's kind yeah. of just, you know, one of those, not name dropping or anything. Just, it's uh, flannel weather outside. We it got is. Some, some Big flag. It it's, it's so nice. comfortable. It's great. It's yeah. made by Fortunate Son and... Uh, Wow. Yes, well, there, there so you go. You should go. I'm sure yeah. there's a .com somewhere. Probably. FortunateSun.com or JohnFogarty.com. Yeah. We're here doing a podcast. I'm so happy to be here doing this again. We have only we haven't done that many of them, but they're fun, right? We just do them for fun. It is fun. We want to share ourselves yeah. with the people, right? We don't, we're That's not right. getting paid for this. We don't... If, if Wait, you, we're not getting paid? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Wait a minute. You, we'll I, take I, you to I double to leave. Yeah. I'm, James I'm, and I, I are out of here. We got yeah, fucking other... Yeah. We got to we'll go make some money. We'll take you to double double okay. later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. The viewers at home will notice there's not even any advertising. We do sell no advertising. We're just doing this out of, yeah. with love, with joy in our hearts. That's why we're doing this, right? Just to, to share our love with the people and hang out, right? That's right. For the kids. So, yeah, so cheers. Well, I'm um, now adults. Well, I was hoping for shameless commercialism. I'm sorry. I, I'm really well, we not, even, that's next I'm not season. jiving it, with this at all. to promote. We put season. our drinks in nondescript solo cups. Uh, wait, I see. I just uh, said a not, uh, nondescript plastic solo. cups. Thank you. Uh, that's right. Yeah, you, so you can't tell I'm drinking Topo Chico. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's the idea. So what's new with you? What's going on? What's what's the latest? Nothing, dude. We were here yesterday, and you know, I've just been dealing with an agent parent, aging parent, an aging so, parent. Yeah, yeah. How's that going? Or do you want to talk? It's about going that? all right. You know, my dad's just he's just up there, and he just needs a lot of care. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he's he's uh, he doesn't remember stuff. He still can. He's still got his wit about him. Like he's just in his in his humor's gotten. Worse, just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. You would really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, the Archie Bunker comes out, you know. It, it, it does. It really does. You know, my dad has never been crude or crass or any of that. And all of a sudden, the last year, like, whoa, dad. <laughs> cool your jets, right. man. Where the hell is this right. coming from? Yeah, it's wow. wild. This I is, have a very this... underdeveloped frontal lobe, so I think nothing will change as I age. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. Yeah. 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 Well, this is great. Tell us more about your father's yeah, declining yeah, health. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, That's uh, uplifting. uplifting. <laughs> yeah, geez, that, 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 way to bring it up, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My spirits are lifted. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, but he does yeah. have his moments. We were listening to we, we were there for Christmas, and I'm playing you know old fashioned Christmas songs. And there's the uh, Do you hear what I hear? And there's this line, said the lamb to the little child. And my dad, without missing a beat, goes, <laughs> 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 like, like he can't remember what he just ate literally five minutes before, or if he just ate five. But minutes he's sharp, before. man. When it comes to but, that stuff, you know, he has yeah. yeah. His, so his wit is still there. He's maybe still maybe better. Up. Maybe better. In yeah. A way. Yeah. 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 I, 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 just have more animal uh, yeah. sounds. That's that's the answer. More animal, yeah. animal yeah. sounds. Exactly. Animal sounds. Yeah. Just talking yeah. to animal sounds. Yeah. yeah. It, it was good seeing you yesterday. We're in the studio. We're recording a new album right yep. now, and we're we're it's coming along. I think, right? I mean, we're, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. We um, don't go in like a six month block. We go like you know a week here and a week there, but chunk chunk to chunk there. Yeah, we'll get you know Bob will come in for a chunk of time, and uh, we just get in here. We come in here a lot for doing whatever, recording, we're, uh, yeah. rehearsing, yeah. hanging and, out. Everybody we're wants doing to podcasts. Know, yeah, uh, they want to know when, when, when. I, yeah. I don't want to give them a date because we'll probably. Miss it, yeah. But, no. <laughs> but soon, yeah. is it soon? Is it slow because of all the violence that I hear about in the studio here? I mean, yeah. oh yeah, is that what slows of, you down, or is it yeah. something else? A lot, a lot of violence, uh, a lot of yeah, violence. You know, yeah. But yeah. we we come for the violence. We stay for the music. Yeah, I see. That's I see. right. Yeah. So we finished in the studio yesterday, and we're here doing a podcast with with James today. We're going to get to you in a second, whatever. Yeah. But uh, so just you know, hang you're on, the but. surprise guest. <laughs> we're making them. That was, yeah. That was the, your, your intro. So stuff. our our Wait, friend this isn't our, the sound check. Our, yeah. our, our our wacky co-host Blackball. He flew down from Seattle. That's where he lives. You flew yeah. down and you brought the rain with you. It's yeah, fucking raining cats and dogs outside. Loved this it. Is like, made it. Made it in a plane. No problem. No panels flew out or whatever. So <laughs> no, that was a good thing. <laughs> so that was a good yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 The, although I was a little like, was uh, it a 737? So, it was a 737, <laughs> but not the Max. <laughs> okay. But the okay. sort of did make me sit. Uh, and uh, they, they, were, they kept calling me the plug and had me sit like by the emergency exit. I'm like, what is going on? Why are they calling me the plug? Put the plug there because I'm like, that's not my assigned seat. That's not my assigned seat. What? Yeah, good so, wow. Whatever. Yeah. Dude, wow. Whatever. Do you wear your seatbelt now? I, extremely tight. <laughs> yeah. extremely Especially yeah. Yeah, in the emergency <laughs> exit row. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. My God. Wow. That's... Well done. Well, thanks for making it down. Thanks yeah, for yeah. You bet. You bet. And I, I want to thank you guys for not being on Epstein's flight log. 
So, <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you for that. I was yeah. going through. I wasn't worried when I was reading the name. I wasn't worried, but I was happy to not see that. So, yeah, me too. Yeah, that's so right. I never yeah. got involved. Yeah, never got invited. Yeah. So, never had to worry about that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Wow! All right, yeah, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm cracking up already. Right. Yeah. How, how is our guest going to follow that? So, well, so welcome, James, James Lilia, Doctor James Lilia, Dr. Thank you. James MD. Lilia, MD, MD, James. For people who don't know, James was our first drummer. That's if you right. Don't, if you don't count Jim Benton, but what, that's not really. He never a, really got drums, though. He, if he, he didn't get <laughs> drums, he never even got a drum kit, did he? I, I don't. Not really. So not then, really. can you really consider him your first drummer? The, the first drummer we ever really played. You know, sort of a drummer in theory, but was, not not in, in in practice, right? Yeah, the first yeah. real drummer we had was James, yeah. and this is going way back uh, to 1984. And uh, James has been nice enough to join us today and uh, and rehash the old days and uh, just catch up. And we're glad to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This I is appreciate great. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Part of you know we wanted to have you come down because we knew you wouldn't be like a boring doctor. I know you're a doctor now, but you're not uh, you're not a boring doctor. You're still um, like Patch Adams. <laughs> yeah, you're cool, Doctor. Like, yes, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. like that. Yeah. No, that's what we usually do that's in the I'm field of about, cancer. Michael, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So where where do we start? Where do we start? James grew up in our in our neighborhood. The kids on our right yeah, neighborhood. I right? knew James was actually friends with my brother Darren uh, early on, like yeah. elementary school. Yeah, second, third, fourth grade, and. Uh, and then I started playing in a band with you and Aaron Henderson, who's who's hanging with us yep. today, um, and Mike Mullenix. We called ourselves the Clowns of Death. Mm -hmm. Clowns of Death. And you came over to a rehearsal at my parents' house in 1984. It was the first time we all played. You, I think it was the first time you played with a full band with That's drums right. and bass. It was, and, yeah. yeah. It was very exciting. It was life changing. Yeah. Actually. And then you stole well, our drummer. Yeah. <laughs> and then you stole James from us. <laughs> well, we, we made some kind of deal. Someone said, Oh, you got to talk to James. We needed a drummer. It was just me and right. Greg. And so you need a drummer. So, and James said, Well, how about I'll be in your band if you be in my band? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always sounds, very transactional. Yeah, that, look at that. <laughs> yeah. that, fair, that works, right? Sounded fair enough. So yeah, I went over to Noodle's house. First time I ever played with him and, and, and James and a couple other guys. And mm -hmm. uh, it was like the room, because I'd only played with like one other guy or whatever, not even usually a real drummer. So it was like the room exploded when we did our first song yeah, together. Yeah. And it was like, this is fucking that rad, fun. man. Yeah. It's always man. fun when you get people in a room together playing yeah. live Noodle's music. living room. Yeah. That was the first... Yep. First time the three of us played together, yeah, I guess, fun. right? Where the magic happened. That's I remember right. you had this crappy, was it a Music Man amp or was it a PV? It was Music PV, Man. PV, wasn't it? Music Man. Oh, PV was later? Uh, I just remember the PV stuff always around. We had yeah. a PV as well, yeah. yeah. And you had this little distortion box that you just plugged into the jack on the amp and then you plugged the guitar cable into the jack. Yeah. You know, and then you just switched a button and that was how you got the distortion and it was just wee. <laughs> really high pitched, really trebly, and everything sounded like that. But didn't Bob find one of those recently? Bob Rock f found one for you. Maybe, yeah, maybe so he, he did. actually got one of those. Yeah, in the studio I, I got again. my first amp uh, from a pawn shop, and it was a hundred bucks. Yeah, totally. And it was a Music Man, which isn't necessarily a bad amp. It was a dual combo, or whatever. But um, it doesn't. It, it, there's no gain on that kind of amp. It's not meant right. for that kind of thing. And so. The pawn shop guy said, oh, no problem. Just plug this box in. You'll be fine. Yeah. 25 bucks, right? And so it sounded shitty, right? It wasn't meant for distorted guitar. Right. Meanwhile, Greg had decided to get the bass, and he got this little backstage practice amp, PV Backstage, which is totally not meant for a bass. It's no. meant for a little, a little distorted guitar you play in your bedroom and stuff. And so it took us about a year to figure out that maybe we should swap amps. <laughs> that's what it was. So we did, I think. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first the amp that I brought over to your practice and stuff. Anyway, right. it was it was really cool, and Clowns of Death went on to play zero shows. Yep, I think <laughs> we did one party. <laughs> no, uh, we no. were trying to play, trying to play Jughead's one party. Dump. Remember that when <laughs> I made that flyer? We're going to play a Jughead's mm -hmm. Dump, and she saw the flyer and then canceled the party. <laughs> oh wow! Because she knew all the punk rock people we knew were oh, going to show up, and she okay. said, "My parents' house will get trashed. I can't do this." I'm like, well, That's right. that was the whole That's purpose right. we made this oh, band God. up. Yeah, <laughs> we play five songs at your party and. 
Maybe yeah, we, yeah, we're going to destroy. I, yeah, I, I actually thought you guys house. were more a little nerdier, man. I didn't know you guys were the rabble rousers. Oh, yeah, Grove, sure. Holy yeah. Moly. No, no, no. We were kind of normal, sort of, but we knew people with names like Lizard. Oh, okay. Literally. <laughs> a guy we knew, punk rocker, that all the coins right. friends that right, I hung right, out with, right, right. they yeah. were the shadier side. The coins friends, yes, for sure. Yes, right. totally. You were the, the one with the troublemaker friends. But, but I wasn't one of oh, them. Okay. I just liked being around them. I don't know why. It's right. like a tourist of evil, you know. Right, right. And so, yeah, they. I think she was afraid those people would come, and so then the party was off. Right. Well, and I then knew, we're like in limbo. She's probably right. She was right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're looking back, yeah. she's damn straight right. <laughs> that was a bad. I knew thing the she Allisons did. and I knew the Reynolds. And oh yeah, and worse. So. Yeah. Worse yeah. probably than that. Yeah, yeah, even worse. Yeah. 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 So. So anyway, so the band imploded. That was it. Right? Well, actually, what happened is, you, you know, so you, 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 I mean, you did end up stealing James, but I, I ended up going to, because you, say, you were writing songs that yeah. were good. Yes. Our songs sucked. No, they sucked. They sucked. They were yeah. supposed to suck, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were supposed to suck. They were right. supposed to be awful. Yeah, we could have been good if we, if we were supposed to be no, good. Yeah. But, no, <laughs> but, but at least we knew yeah. that and yeah, intentionally yeah, yeah. wrote garbage. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Let's we stay in our Lane. Let's That's stay right. In our stay lane. in our lane. Yeah. So, so I said, yeah. Why don't you uh, count noodles? Come on over to our side and so, be in our yeah. band. Yeah. So then I I went and watched you guys play once, and I went, wow, this you know the songs are way better than ours. I remember, and we were still playing as Clowns of Death at that point. <laughs> and then Dexter eventually playing. asked me to join the band too, and I was like, yeah, this this will be good. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. you remember the drum set? You first gave me Jim Benton's thing that that thing that moved every time you played it. <laughs> like every hit, it just it flexed. The whole thing flexed. <laughs> okay. Because you could lift the whole thing with it one hand. It was a Toys R Us drum kit, right? Yeah, probably. Was, yeah. you, you told me it was probably. Japanese or something. I'm like I don't know. I don't know anything about. Yeah. And then, then so I had were that, some of the best drum kits in the world, and, like Thomas. No, but I remember you saying that. That was like yeah. But that was my that was the set. <laughs> yeah. So the set we put together after that. Remember you introduced me to Arnie. The guy that cut cymbals, like he had all the cracked cymbals because I couldn't afford cymbals. Oh, yeah. right, right. And so he would saw the edges off. So I had all these cymbals with like- Whenever there was a crack, Like a yeah. cat with an you ear would... tag chopped yeah. out of its ear, like a yeah, tomcat. Yeah, 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 yeah. To keep the Vaguely. crack from spreading yeah. to the center. Yeah, and so the ride I had had that giant wedge cut out of it because he would well, drill on top of the crack and then saw the wedge out. I remember And then that. it would make yeah, yeah. this, you know, it made a sound. <laughs> but, and then what was funny is, remember I went up to school, I was at UCLA, and someone broke into my apartment and stole the whole thing. And so that's when I got the Thomas Swing Star, because insurance covered it. Okay, wow. Yeah. wow. So, Probably your yeah. roommate actually threw it out, like, you know, this is fucking garbage. <laughs> Fortuitous. Throw it in the dump, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so by that time, you went to US UCLA, I went to USC, we were both, both pre-med, and then we would try to get together on the weekends and practice and learn new songs, and we still hadn't really played a show yet. I think our first show was in Santa Cruz, right? The, Santa Cruz, yeah. Yeah. In uh, whatever uh, that was. It was Club Culture. And you uh, found the flyer. Yeah. And we um, were still Manic Subsidal then. Manic we, were, subsidal. we were still Manic Subsidal. Um, Pretty punk rock name, right? Black body. Is I, that, don't that is the, I don't remember the. I don't remember the. Did you find the club culture one? You found the flyer and said, okay. your punk I test? couldn't believe it. Yeah, 100%. Okay. 100%, yeah. 100% legit. Um, legit. So Who came up with that scared, name? Manic. Scared straight, white flag, right? White flag. White flag, flag played, yeah. Scared straight. Um, it was two other bands and then us uh, at the opening. We drove all the way to Santa Cruz to open this crappy yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you remember when Creasel's little brother vomited in the paper bag and threw it out the back window of the van? Like the little windows <laughs> that open only this wide. Uh, so he stuffed it out the window. And like, I thought we were going to get oh, sprayed no. with vomit. And then it skittered across the freeway and sucked up into someone's grill. <laughs> do you remember that? And you're like yelling yeah, at us. Yeah. Like, don't do that. And he's like, oh, I got car sick. That? Yeah. <laughs> That's all part of the adventure. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, because every show, I mean, it was so hard to get a show. If you got a show in Santa Cruz, hey, no problem, right. 400 miles away, we're stuck to get a show anywhere. <laughs> but it became this big adventure. It was a road trip, right? Yeah. Because we played the, the afternoon, we played uh, Mabuhe Gardens, which was a the legendary punk club the in next San Francisco. Day, right? The next day with Burning Witches and a couple of other bands. Yeah. yeah. And we were terrible. I mean, we were so bad. Like, if James made a mistake, he would just stop for a second. <laughs> 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 you would have to stop and wait and figure out and then come back. To figure in. out where I was. Yeah. And Noodles broke strings constantly. All the time. He broke yeah. a string during this set and he didn't have any strings because the strings were in the car. So he had to stop <laughs> yeah. and he left us on the stage 
for about two minutes doing this while he ran out to the ran car, the car. <laughs> grabbed a string. Actually, it was my other guitar was in the, in the car. Is that I, what I it did, was? I did bring a spare guitar. I just left it in the car. It's so, our second show. The show, it was complete yeah. disaster. Just yeah. awful. But and do you yeah. remember the, 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 the most anti-punk rock story that I remember? Was we were in L.A. Remember all the clubs were, were like net, booking no shows. All the hair metal died, and we were on Sunset Strip somewhere. I can't remember if it was the Whiskey or the Roxy, one of those places. And we were backstage, and someone broke a pipe after no, we played. No, it was Madame Wong. Madame Wong. Okay, Madame maybe Wong's. it was that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Santa Monica. And someone my, broke my cousin a pipe. Helped me get that get that gig. It was one of the other <sighs> bands. It wasn't us, but no, we were it the wasn't punk us. Band. And then like what well, they accused us, and I yelled at the owner saying. Just because we're the punk rock band here, you think we broke a pipe in another room. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, it wasn't even in our room, right? Yeah. No. I was like, okay. And then we went and out back. And remember- My cousin got in trouble for that because I was her, you know, she helped me get the gig there. Yeah. So, Leslie, I'm sorry. Yeah, my cousin Leslie. <laughs> but then the I like still think bands, she right? thinks we had something to do with it. I know. I, and I, then- I swear to her- and- she still kind of looks at me like I'm not sure. But Wait, remember, but was then Lizard with you guys. Well, who was the who was, was the hanger? On? <laughs> What's that? I said was Lizard there. Lizard. Uh, no, might, no. Might no we, I don't it's think we brought. <laughs> I don't think we brought anybody to that. No, no. Show, but yeah. there was somebody with us. There was a kid that ran up to you when we were loading the van with a guitar that wasn't ours. He goes, "I stole this guitar." No, that was it. That was at a rehearsal place. Was it the real yeah place? yeah that was oh uh, I'm mixing that stories was a, this is the problem that getting was a old Trojan <laughs> right. Trojan and I made I I took it back and went hey one of our guys accidentally grabbed yeah this exactly guitar. I'm like you don't steal um, shit yeah you know, well plus it was you yeah. know we we use that place for rehearsal quite a bit but this yeah. was a this was a well. It was Leatherwolf. It was Leatherwolf's guitar. It was a BC Rich <laughs> guitar. It was one of Leatherwolf's guitars. And they left have. their fucking vault unlocked. For and one of our guys went in and stole, stole the guitar. It. Oh. And we it gave was, it back, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to just give you his uh, his initials, J.H. Okay. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. yeah. One of yeah, Jason's yeah, yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, wow. And, uh, yeah, I so, mean, so we just took it back in. And, and That's what, like, the first shows were, were about. But I just came across something <clears> today, cause, or you guys did last night, a show we played with Agnostic Front in 86. And do we have that, fl- we have that do we have that flyer? Okay, here we yeah. go. Somebody, I guess Ben, our, our illustrious producer, found the actual flyer. Wow. Wait, that says 88. I it says 88, that's but... Old. I, yeah, that's, that's not I, old I, enough. It, I mean, too old. I think... I don't think it was 88. I think it was 86 or 87. Um, but it's possible it could have been 88. But that's definitely the, the venue. That's definitely the, the gig. Yeah. And Agnostic Front didn't even get to play because there was a bunch of skinheads and, and just people you, being You guys dicks. don't really fit on that bill. And that's a pretty <laughs> hardcore bill. Like, it was really uh, hardcore, yeah. And, and so that's, why, yeah. that's a great show, but you guys... Yeah. Not, not really. The but awesome. you'll see on the map that says fire, de- fire department right next to the gig, right yeah. next to the hall, and people were throwing beer bottles like forties over the wall, and so the fire department just had it shut down. Right? It was the dumbest thing ever. Super <laughs> so, smart. Punkers weren't smart back then. No. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was gnarly. It was, it was. You said hardcore, but a little bit, you know, kind of skinhead too. Especially as you went more into the IE, I think it got more like yeah, that yeah, at, sure. at that time or whatever, right? Yeah. But, um, but the amazing thing about this particular show is that James, for some reason, had a video camera, and those were not easy to come by back in the late '80s, right? It was right. shoulder mounted or whatever. Yeah, it's big. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, you captured the whole thing the whole day. We have this. It's like an hour long. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, I watched it not the too long thing. ago. Some of it's kind of you know corrupted or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it still takes you back. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll put together a clip and and put it in there and then. Yeah. So, so now, guys, <clears throat> pretend like you just saw this amazing yeah. clip. Go, whoa! <laughs> Wasn't that insane? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I was we young really and do hot? that? I was young and hot at one time, man. Yeah, <laughs> no. no, but this it, the footage is it's a, it's a, it's cool. Yeah. It's amazing. Right, super, and it, super it's, rad. it's such yeah. a trip, right? Because it, it do you know shows like us. you went to you went to Guitar Center at the beginning of it and got drumsticks. Do you know who was filming you? Do you remember who it was? <sighs> I don't know. I don't remember who it was. I thought it was Aaron. It might have been Aaron. Oh, he, we can ask yeah. him, but I, I don't remember. But I remember like, I'm walking down the street. I'm talking. And I'm going in to buy drums, and it's all corrupted and right. like, it skips. I've seen that. Yeah, same video. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. then somebody then somebody filmed us playing. Maybe Aaron as well. Yeah. But you see like all the old, you know, like. Jason Creasel is Thompson there and uh, Doug Thompson's yeah, yeah. hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Ricky's Shipley. in there. Yeah. 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 Our yeah. manager. So. Uh-huh. Is that Ricky? No, Doug Thompson. Remember he called oh, himself our he, manager? Yeah, manager. <laughs> he didn't manage anything. 
Go so ahead. I have wait, one wait, question. Wait, though. One, wait, one wait, more wait, question. But, 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 what's so cool about that, though, is like, I think when things finally happened for us, it was kind of like, oh, these guys are not, they're not real punk or blah, 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 right? And I like being able to go to that and go, well, actually, we were kind of there from the, oh, yeah, from the yeah, very totally. beginning. We didn't know. And we did that for 10 years before Smash No one helped out, us so. out, right? And we've got, yeah. the, we've got the video to prove it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got the evidence. <laughs> were you gonna Were you gonna ask something? No, I'm, there was another. You know, my memory is completely scrambled. But where was the place where we broke out the wall of the abandoned house, ran extension yeah. cords from next door? <clears throat> I think you got us that show. I think I, it was I did. Somehow. But where was it? And I remember uh, Creasel's mom gave me the human thigh bones to play drums with. Remember that? Yeah, we did that at the high school. We did that at Pacifica. Yeah, that was another <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And it, they, but they broke at that show. They, they finally they fell just, apart they disintegrated. and disintegrated at that show. <laughs> Yes. Did you play with the human bones at the the house de yes. destruction and that's party where too? The, yeah. yeah. That then the pieces all came off, yeah. and I lost the drums, and I had to get <clears> that was that back. was one of the funnest shows, just because we got to play in this living room of this house, like all the windows and doors were blown. Yeah, out. we're ta you know, people were taking sledgehammers to the wall. Yeah, yeah. We stuff, sledgehammered and... the one wall out as a stage, yeah. so the side room from the living room was the stage that we sledgehammered <laughs> out. <laughs> that was a great oh, show. That was a lot of fun. fun. Yeah. I know. Where were you, man? You were really missing out. You came along way too late. I came along yeah. way you, later. You didn't come along until like 92 during Ignition yeah, or whatever. So, well, I, I think I started seeing you guys. Like It shows kind of like, like that, but... I was in a parking lot drinking, waiting for uh, the real band or, or, the real band or something, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. and it wasn't until like Ignition came out when I was like, oh shit, this guy's fucking rule. And then I started paying attention. And then right after I got Ignition is when I, I happened to be a vinyl solution going through. And I was like, oh, fuck it. Found the first LP right on Nemesis. And I got that. And I was like, oh my God, I fucking love this. And then that's. The history, and here so, we are. And here we and are. And Black Ball, is it yeah. Black Ball still Black your Ball. favorite song? So Black Ball, I, 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 I was I, I was listening to the demo tapes on the way to the studio today. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so yeah, uh, Ballroom Blitz, I was listening to it all, you oh, know. Oh, wow, the, yeah. Yeah, okay, and, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But that cassette. It was, uh, yeah, it, I, I have the, I, I don't have the actual cassette, but I just have the, you know, I have it on my phone, my iPad or whatever, right? But yeah, and so then I, Black Ball, I just absolutely loved, you know, and, and so, but they weren't playing it then, you know, so I kept yelling, Black Ball, Black Ball, Black Ball. And they're like, dude, <laughs> if we play it, will you shut the fuck up and leave us alone? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I just play it one time. Then I actually have video. I recorded that too. I then I think he kept, like, we <laughs> played it, and I think he it. kept screaming for us to play it more yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, no, no, like two songs Come later. Come to Brazil. Yeah. yeah, two songs later, I started yelling. To, for them to play black ball again, like like so, literally right after I did it the first, they played it. So yeah, it was good times. So but yeah, ended up becoming his name. We yeah. call him black. That's yeah. how he got his name, black I was ball. Like, oh fuck, here comes black ball. Fuck, black ball's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, eventually, we we just started laughing with you. Yeah. It's, it's rather than at me. you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Now I brought a memento today to show just how far back we go. You know, we're talking about the old stuff, right, and the, all these shows and stuff. But I actually brought. A yearbook because we went to the same high school. Oh my god! <laughs> so this is this is the the reef from Pacifica High School, 1983. It is so legit that Noodle's sister is one of the pictures on here. She's right there. Wow. It's kind of did you know? Oh, that? My, oh my god! god. Yeah, did yeah. You know Cheryl's on the. <laughs> my dad's in this. Oh really? Yeah, my sister wow. was like homecoming princess. One, she wasn't the queen. She was like one of the princesses, and my dad right is there with her. Yeah, he's. Oh, well, that's you know, you insane. Get this, you get this the last week of high school, and then everyone goes around that last week, and they all they look for the page and they sign it, whatever. And it's you know have a bitch in summer and <laughs> see at the beach and stuff. And uh, I thought I remembered that James wrote something kind of wacky, and I wanted to show him just so, oh, to no. show you how. <laughs> do you really how, have how to do this? How insane! <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say how insane Jane is, and I, uh, James is, and I don't, I don't mean it that way because I know you have a professional reputation to, pr to protect. So <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but I mean like w let's just say wonderfully creative. So you can, you can go to one, <laughs> on one of the, oh, here we go. So, and I remember how this happened. <laughs> we we're in the chemistry class. <laughs> And oh. you started drawing it. There's a picture there too, Black Ball. But, um, oh my God, it's got a math <laughs> equation on yeah, it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I remember it because you told it as a story. This was total freeform, right? You started drawing the egghead and you go, I'm drawing an egghead. And then I'm going, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, okay, this is more interesting than the usual autograph I get from people, right? All right. And then he goes, He's dancing, and so and that's where the dancing stuff started, right? So imagine just the dancing, right? And then he goes, you know, he's thinking about trigonometry, and then the thought the thought bubble comes up, and then he goes, 
he's dancing with lizards. <laughs> and if you notice, he doesn't sign it. There's no, uh, there's no signature. <laughs> you have that is, that, yeah. that is the autograph, yeah. and probably the best autograph I ever got in high school. Yeah, for so sure. I, wanted, well. I wanted to give you credit here in front of oh all these people. Oh Hold on to that. When I die, these, it'll be worth millions. <laughs> all, all these years later, yeah. Even the speakers seem anthropomorphic somehow, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> I see faces in the speakers. <laughs> Very expressive. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. See, glad, glad you brought that, that up. Back, yeah, see, we knew that is right. he had a lot of potential. That's even good. even back then, and you squandered it all on medicine. <laughs> on saving lives. Yeah, I know. What a waste. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff. the other funny thing that brings it back is remember uh, they just had the punk rock bowling show at uh, Las Vegas they do every year. I went yep. with Aaron because Aaron was in Steady Brewing and we went out to promote his beer. Oh, right. Yeah, and he, um, I got to meet the Damned, which was cool. Oh, right. But we were backstage selling the beer. But when we went to the Punk Rock Museum and saw your display, there's upstairs is that little room with the guitars that you can just play in, which is really cool. And so we were up there, and the guy that was babysitting the room for the museum was the same guy that set up the shows in the desert for us. With oh, all those punk the FSP bands? guy. Yeah, it's the yeah. same guy. I took a picture with him. I was like, I can't wow. believe you're, what? And he's like, I was there. He goes, yeah, you were there. Wow. He just happened to yeah, be there right yeah. there. Happened to be there yeah. the day we walked in. You know, I talked about how we had to, we'd had we have to go who knows where to get do a show. Well, this guy in Vegas wanted to do shows, but no venues would have punk bands. So he goes, fuck it. We're going to go out into the middle of the desert or 40 miles out of town. We're going to set up generators and play. And so we used to do those kinds of shows in the middle of the desert, in the middle of literally nowhere, right? Yeah. And um, well, there was a, it was a flood control channel, so it was this big three walled cement kind of thing that had all these tubes at the bottom that people would just run through too, and or, or go out in and make out or drink beer or do drugs or whatever. <laughs> right. But it had the crappiest sound because it was like three cement walls, so <laughs> yeah. it just reverberated. Yeah. It was really horrible. And remember, sound. we played with Lethal Gene. They did. They did one. Lethal oh, Gene. Lethal Gene. Did we did remember it them? Times. Ernie and Mike. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. The yeah. drummer played barefoot. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> what? Vaguely. Vaguely. I don't remember barefoot. Mike playing barefoot, but yeah. But we actually got a show with Fugazi out there one time. <laughs> wow. Believe it or not. Yeah. Well, that the, was the Mojave. Lengths, the lengths we had to go to. Fugazi was actually Mojave where we played. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> my memory. <laughs> this is my memory here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever. One of those things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a desert show. It was... uh, so. Anyway, Those where, do you want, so, where do you want where do you want to go from here? So, uh, but eventually, you you ended up going to, to medical school. Do you want to do you want to talk about? All well, that? it's weirdly, I actually went to grad school first because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and so I was in microbiology, right, as a microbiology major. I really dug it, and so I had this plan to actually go to grad school, and I said, I'll just do the masters because you can get a job as the yeast god. Of like the big breweries. <laughs> right. And yeast growth is a big deal and right. it's complicated and they're they're hard to do. And these beer companies like, you know, Miller and all that stuff, they needed consistency. So they keep their yeast in these vaults and they have like these yeah. high priests that manage it. And I was like, I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Why, why, is, yeast, like, why is yeast hard? Uh, their, their biology is really bizarre. So they're not like bacteria. Bacteria are much more manageable, but yeast are a pain. Eukaryotic, right? Yes, they're very <laughs> complex. And so, anyhow, uh, uh, that that like I was in grad school, and it was just kind of this hippie never never land of. They said, "Hey, man, you're going to be in the PhD program now. It'll be here forever. <laughs> you don't need to do your experiments. Come play volleyball." And I was like, "Weren't you guys sort of on the same track in college at at one point, pre med?" Both pre med. I was at USC. He was at UCLA. Okay. Yes. Well, we had we didn't school. have that major, so it was just microbiology. So I had to pick a bio. You can't okay. major in in med right. pre med. Right. So you have to pick a major. I was straight biology, and he was microbiology. Okay. Yeah, but I wasn't I, sure. I remember honestly, you guys. Talk, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I remember you guys kind of going back and forth, and there was this one, and I don't know why I remember this one thing. You you were talking about Batesian mimicry, and <laughs> and and one of you guys goes, "Oh, I thought it was." Batesian mimicry. I've only read it. I've never heard it pronounced. That was probably me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't That's the thing it. about reading big words. You don't know for sure yeah. how they sound. So we're not even going to explain what that is. Google it. Yeah. Please. So then when I was in grad school, I mean, I really didn't know what I was going to do. And I was just, I just kept going and I loved science. So I just kept there. And then I took these classes in their medical school classes for microbiology and I fell in love with it. And that's when I went and took the MCAT and left. And then they called me a traitor. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So you, but you PhDs were, hate the MDs. You were, oh, wow. you were pre-med yeah. as an undergrad, and then you thought you weren't going to be pre-med, or and then you. Yeah, no, I wasn't. I mean, I, I just would say whatever the hell people said, you know, wanted me to say. Like my parents said, "You're going to be a dentist." That's actually what they said. "You're going to be a dentist." Don't you remember yeah. that? No. Yeah, I was, I that was where that. it started. Yes. You're going to be a dentist. Yeah, a dentist, a dentist, and I'm like. I don't want to be a dentist. <laughs> Harvey wants to be a dentist. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, it comes right, from yeah, that yeah. old Christmas special, <laughs> right? I, I would like to yeah. apologize yeah. to my brother, Jess, if you're listening to this. Uh, he's, he's a great dentist. dentist. Really no, good no, dentist. It's, a, it's a great yeah. job. Does I mean, a lot of good things for, for decent, honest Yeah, yeah, no, people. it's it's great, but that's not me, you know? Right. And so I just, I was always being pushed around <laughs> by like what parents and parents of parents, you know, like parents' friends told me I was going to do and all that. And so I just didn't know. So I was just drifting. Yeah. You know, so I wasn't sure. And so I would just say, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I just kept taking classes. <laughs> okay. Cause I like the classes, you know, I just, I, I really like being a student. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I think, think you guys both did. Well, there's something very yeah. noncommittal about being a <laughs> perpetual student, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you but know. honestly, I mean, in the sciences, and you know, I'm a big proponent of the sciences. It's like you're learning the mysteries of the universe. Is you, you know, everything's a little, you know, uh, epiphany when you learn something. Like, wow, I didn't right. know that happened, or this worked this way, or. Yeah, you know, and then you that's start looking why, at the world differently. Totally, like when you go, that's why I pee so much when I drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's because your antidiuretic hormone goes down. Yes! It's affected by the alcohol. It's amazing. It. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Asian friend turns red when he drinks alcohol because he has no alcohol dehydrogenase in his stomach. <laughs> that's fascinating. Did you know that you have... And you're like, shut up, James. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The mysteries of the, the universe. We would have these, I remember these conversations like on, <laughs> you know, Friday and Saturday night, you know. Yeah. You're just always feeling playing. like the stupidest yeah. person in the room, right? You start just off like, just Fine. playing, you know. <laughs> okay, now, one, one two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Back to, now back to punk rock. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Both sides of the brain. Yeah, use, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was a great way of impulse control for me by playing drums, you know. It's, it gets it out of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, so at one point, at some point, then you decided you wanted to go to medical school. Yeah, yeah. It was it was in grad school when it hit me that I could not be in hippie never never land, and I really did like medicine, you know, because once I took the classes, then I was like, "There's a whole world I don't understand. I need to go there. You know, I need to see that." Right, and yeah, yeah. I always wanted to help people some way. I just didn't know what that meant. You know, uh -huh. I didn't like. How do you do that? You can just say it. But what does that mean? <laughs> Right, you know, right, and so yeah. that's then I suddenly realized what it could be, what it could mean. I'm like, oh, that's for me. Nice. And so, how yeah. hard was it to get into medical school then at that point? I don't remember. I mean, I had a wall of shame and a wall of success that I glued to the wall of all the places that would like you know reject me or take me. Okay. And, oh wow. And okay. I flew all over just to see what was going on. I had this weird romantic notion: I must I must be schooled in the east. In the east is where uh, they know more things. Yes, okay. very Patrician. And they have like yes. ivy on the walls and yeah, snow. Right, right. And they're very serious. And so, so I went to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah. okay. I ended up in Pittsburgh, yeah. And how was that? <clears throat> um, <laughs> well, I ended up in a house. <laughs> house full of lunatics because all the okay. misfits found me and I made another band, right? <laughs> and so I immediately was the house band. We kicked out the other house band and started being the house band for the medical school. And we got the entire party they would have every year with the house band playing with the American Students Medical Association, the ASMA or whatever they call it, AMSA, AMSA, yeah, American Medical Students Association. We played there and then we got banned <laughs> immediately. We and they canceled, banned. they canceled the party from there on out. We couldn't use the school property yeah. anymore. And like, <laughs> oh, man. oh, so no man. matter where you've gone, you've brought this band thing with you. I have the, actually. The band follows yeah. you. Yeah, yeah I did. Band. So I did that. And so, but we were the clowns of death in the basement when we'd switch instruments and then do something else. And so I would sing for the clowns of death in the basement of my house. Okay. And then we'd like all switch instruments like from the band guys and the boring people would go. I like that you kept that, band. kept that going because it's a name <clears throat> we stole from Oingo Boingo. I know, I know, yeah, but I, I yeah. just love the name. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, it's it was so perfect. It Can you great. tell me about the band you started called the Sons of Cecil? And what is that? Oh, what that, is was, that, the house band. Oh, so the that house was the band. house band okay. for the medical and, school. No, so. only, only medical students would understand the joke. So maybe explain. Okay, so let me explain. I can't believe you know this, which is really scary. And I'm really afraid where this whole podcast is going. But so the Sons of Cecil, Cecil. 
going to get out the rubber gloves Cecil here. Cecil J. Yeah. Jacobson was an East Coast reproductive endocrinologist, and he was jailed because he was using his own semen oh, to yeah, impregnate yeah. all these women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, so they, they came in to get pregnant, and he used his own semen for the first. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. he did. So there are like hundreds of kids that are all his kids. <laughs> And so we made this we made this big banner. I drew this big banner where I showed like, you know, like a genetic chart. You ever seen the pedigree charts? Yeah, you know, yeah, it shows yeah. like one guy and then this big line <laughs> with all these, you know, his progeny of, of one guy. And so we would just hang that. It didn't have any words on it. You know, we just we were the sons of Cecil. So we played bars and that was your banner. <laughs> yeah, that was the That's a punker name to Maddox title. That's a great name. Yeah, Isn't that great? That's really good. It was, it was, it was really good. pretty funny. Oh yeah. God. Really good. And then the next band I went to residency and I formed another a cover band there and that was Taste Like Chicken. Oh yeah, I <laughs> so remember that. Taste Like Chicken was a band that played everything on the radio because it was all the grunge time and it all kind of sounded sort of similar to me. Right. So I said everything we play, it's <laughs> mm. <Taste> like chicken. <laughs> so our, our symbol was this this symbol with all the shadows of animals that tasted like chicken around it. <laughs> and then we'd always have a big chicken head in the middle of it or whatnot. And we'd have these little flyers that we'd handed out. And it was really funny. So I, I learned this technique when I was in Taste Like Chicken of how to get gigs. So, you know, Houston's a great place to be, and there's all these so nightlife places. Houston, places. Oh, Houston. oh, sorry, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Houston, UT Houston uh, was where I did my residency, you know. And so um, there was all these venues to play, like tons of them. But they were really hard to get into. And so we had this this other my, – my, the guy was playing drums because I was singing for this band. The guy who was playing drums had a friend that was in a band that was really serious called the Toy Subs, and they were, like, trying to be all big. And – we got more gigs than they ever did <laughs> because all the guys in my band were ER physicians or radiologists and they worked at like nine hospitals. <laughs> and in the ERs, if you don't know this, ER crews, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, are lunatic. Yeah. So they have like night shifts. I would think shifts. you would have to be a little like- Yeah, they're right. tweaked. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. but they're fun. And yeah. so we would go around and hand out our little taste like chicken flyers to everybody and say, come to our show. And the way I got the first show was I wa went around town drinking at different bars and I found one place with an upstairs stage and a second bar. And it's this crappy, like nautical themed bar. I don't even remember what it was called, like Captain something. It was so lame. But we we're drinking downstairs and I said, hey, what's upstairs? The, the bartender was like the manager. And he's like, well, it's just, you know, we have bands here sometimes. I said, my band's going to play here. <laughs> And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I, I, I can't do that. I need a demo. There will be no demo. <laughs> My band will play here. You will, and he's like, I'm not going to pay. I'm like, we do not wish your money. <laughs> We're going to play here. We're going to be upstairs. Pick the worst night of the week. We get the door. You get the bar. What have you got to lose? Okay. And he was like, okay. And so we did. And we went and passed out those flyers. And the place was packed. Because everyone just knew us, and they yeah, were like, well, right. I'm going to go see his band. I'm yeah, going to go yeah, see his yeah. band. I'm going to go see his band. And they all came. They descended on the place. Yeah. And so in the middle of the set, I'm walking <laughs> off, and this bartender had to call in two other bartenders. He was dragging a garbage can, overflowing with empty cups and bottles. And like I remember this like it was yesterday. His, he was bald, and his like head was beaded with sweat. And he's like, you can come back anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right? And so then yeah, we springboarded awesome. off that. So then we play that a couple times. Yeah, and then I would awesome. take that and I'd take his number. And I went to the next better bar, like had a better stage. And I did the same thing. It's like, my band's going to play here. And they're like, eh, we need to see it. There will be no demo. <laughs> there will be no demo. Call Captain Jacks or whatever the bar and said, ask him yeah. how Wednesdays go. You ask him. And then you call me. And then I would leave. <laughs> right and sure as shit they would call me right wow. they say you could come here you know come here on this day and then wow. i kept doing it and doing it doing it and then by the time in four years later so all this was funding our band space practice space and a more ridiculous light show as we went we used to buy oh more and God. more lights so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, more yeah. stupid yeah. stuff would happen yeah. as we went yeah. and then finally we played at one of the biggest clubs in town <laughs> and I, that circling back that other band was going nowhere it's like i can't believe tastes like chicken can play at the city club we can't <laughs> yeah. even get a gig there i'm like well, you're not taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. Did you make yeah. them open for you? <laughs> yeah. Should have made them open. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think they would have yeah. stooped to I'm that getting, level. Yeah. I'm getting a couple things out of this. The first is that uh, I'm now realizing that your medical career is just a backdrop for your musical career. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just, just, established. Just, that yeah. may be true. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing is what? how much fun these doctors can be. I, you know, I picture a yeah. doctor coming in the morning in a white coat and a tie and let's discuss patient Johnson. But no, you're distri- you're throwing, you're passing around flyers. <laughs> yeah. Tastes like chicken. Yep. <laughs> For the party on yeah. Wednesday night. Yeah. Yep, that's wow. what we do. That's to this, a to this day, the doctors party <laughs> yeah. so much right now. <laughs> now Houston is where I we reconnected with you because we, yes. were, we things were just taken off for us on Smash, and then somehow I don't know how you got a hold of me, but you said I'm in Houston, blah blah blah. And the, the story you told me was that you were literally unpacking your stuff for residency, and you turn on the TV, and there we were. Oh no, it's a little different than that, but it's very close. So. I was in this house, right? There was just two of us in this house. We were rented right by the school and it was big. So this house was pretty big. And I was like flipping through the, you know, the normal city rags that shows you like what shows are on. Cause I was always doing something in Houston and I run across offspring at numbers. Numbers was the place you yeah. guys were playing. I was like, I don't remember oh my God, thing. someone stole the name. And like, <laughs> and then I thought, wait a minute. Maybe it's them, and maybe they need a place to crash. Could you guys play numbers at that point? <laughs> Tastes like chicken? No, we didn't play numbers. <laughs> but, but so I called down there, and I called the guy that answered the phone was this guy. I don't remember his name now. Maybe it's the same person. I don't remember. It was like, and I said, hey, you know, is Brian there? And I'm like, well, yeah, he's backstage practicing. I'm like, well, put him on the phone. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't do that. Who the hell are you? He's like, I'm their manager. And I started laughing because I remember Doug Thompson was our manager before. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you go, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, come on. He's like, well, I can give you backstage passes. It's like, okay, give me backstage passes. I'll be there. You know, you know I was just saying, maybe they want to crash on my floor. And when I showed up, you guys were shell shocked because everything was yeah. taken off. Must have been the tour manager at the time. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know who it was, but Jason, name. I think, was a guy at the time, maybe. Yeah, yeah I don't know who it was, but it's like, you guys were just, I don't know it's how this happened. US tour. I don't know what's going on, but we got to yeah. go right after this. We got no time. It's just crazy. And you told me what the schedule is you guys do. And I'm like, Holy shit, that's crazy. That whole year was nuts. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The smash. We were doing like yeah. five nights in a row at that point, I yeah. think. Stuff yeah, you like had, you guys all had like hotel rooms still. Sharing and, hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you had the 10,000 yard stare. You're like, I don't know where this is going. It's like crazy clown car skidding across the ice kind of look. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> that's what it was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you guys were just, yeah. uh, we can't really do, we got to rest. We got to go. We got to, you know, we got to get on the bus. Yeah, was I mean, we, it was exciting, you know, but but we didn't know what. what yeah, we were kind of like, whoa, this is, is this really happening? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a great show. It was a great show. Good, oh, nice. But um, yeah, it was just it, it was so funny because I was like, wow, you know, it's ten years later. Yeah, you know, ten years later, I just I figured someone stole the name. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Damn I mean, it. Yeah, yeah. it's like, come on, come yeah. up with your own name. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, so what did, what, why did you leave Austin? What happened? Like, was it for school? Uh, it's just school and life and just, you know, it was just far away. And I don't know, it was just the scene was kind of dying in a lot of ways. Like, it was like, remember the Nazi punk show? Those guys were in the middle of a mosh pit. And, and I was like, I. That might have been the. the yeah, the it might have been. I don't know. It was like, just there this, was a lot of those. Yeah, though. the yeah. scene yeah. was just yeah. getting it was, nasty. It was yeah. just getting mean. And it was, you it know. Was less, it was less musical and it was just more percussive and, and kind of angry. Yeah, and, and, and it was physical. Just like, and, and I've had my share yeah. of that, right? I went to junior yeah. high, high school in Pacific. And it's like, <laughs> I'm done with that. You know, it just, yeah. it just was too much. And it was like, and I really got to study. And I really got it. Whatever I'm doing, I've got to get better grades than I did. You know, my grades were pretty yeah. crappy my first year, and I had to make up for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you were, I think you were, you were pretty involved in your uh, frat too. You were in pre med. Yeah, but it was more like the UCLA. studying. It was like that ruined my first year's grades. You know, it was just terrible. Like, so All I just right. got to stop this. I got to clean up and stop doing that, you know? Right, right. And so that's when I just, I had to bear down and start studying. And I just had to. Yeah. Well, you know, he settled. He settled for, you know, a career as a medical doctor. So, <laughs> so what it's kind of doctor right. are you? Okay. Sell out. So you I'm a gynecologic out. oncologist. Ah, uh, so you stuck with the yeast. <laughs> 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 oh, if I could strangle you right now. <laughs> Oh. 
shit. Oh, Fucking black ball. Can we ask him to leave now? Yeah, or, right. <laughs> does he stay for all of these shows all the way through, or is there some point? Is there some like. point he goes away? <laughs> oh my god. No, it's all women's cancer, and then the, a lot of benign surgery too. So it's a it's a highly technical surgical thing. Um, we're trained in chemotherapy too, but we don't currently do it because our patients are coming from far away. So we usually have them go locally, but yeah, we're, we're a surgical practice. Wow. There's uh, four of us now. I try to recruit somebody on Monday. We'll see if they take the job by next month. There's different ways to treat cancer. And of course they, they tend to do multiple methods in tandem, chemotherapy, et yeah. cetera, but you, but your, your specialty focuses on the surgical part of it. Well, we, we're also, it's sort of a strange thing because a lot of general surgery stuff, you, you do the surgery and the patient goes away. We keep the patient for five years and sort of air traffic control, all those other therapies. Okay. So that's kind of what we do because we keep up on our literature. It's very narrow. I mean, honestly, I treat five diseases, you know, so really? I can be really dumb and still do this. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's not as much literature to keep up with. Like, say, if you do just general medical oncology and you've got to treat every cancer, you know, they're right. wildly different. Uh -huh. yeah. So ours have, you know, we have a certain body of literature, you know, it's, you can stay on top of it because it's not that many diseases. Yeah. And so you can still read up and be an expert at it because it's okay. narrow. It's a narrow field. And then the surgical stuff is is all practice, obviously. It just becomes how... So on surgery day, how many are lined up? How many operations are you doing? It depends. So roughly I'm doing 10 a week, you know, 10 surgeries a week. Not all of them are malignant. I mean, a lot of them is like, is it malignant? You know, is it right. another problem? Or it's the stuff that the other, the generalists don't want to do. So uh -huh. if they have a case that are saying too many surgeries prior, too sick, you know, like medically sick, because uh -huh. we're dealing with medically sick all the time. You know, we're dealing with comorbidities, as we call it, other diseases with your disease. Right. Hypertension, okay. diabetes, you know, right, obesity, right. you know, all that type, type of stuff. So um, we're like this narrow little oddball surgical subspecialty. And so that's what we do. Um, you said malignant maybe. Is it the kind of thing where you don't know until you get in there? Or even once you get in there, you don't, don't necessarily know? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, cells can be microscopic. So you never really know how things are going to go until time passes. So we have lots of machines, we have blood tests, we have things like that, but everything really is an educated predictive guess, uh -huh. right? Everything is. And can so you, you, you never know, but you can predict sort of. <clears throat> can you kind of look at it once you open it up and go, oh, this is one of the Yeah, other. so you, you have your eyes, you know, so you have a little bit of diagnostic stuff. You have imaging, you have blood tests, you have just general, you know, condition. You can take a history and physical, make one guess. Then mm -hmm. you do the surgery. You can then have the pathologist look at what you got. You know, mm -hmm. how extensive it is in the materials you send out, which is called staging. That's like, you know, uh, grade and histology is what is it? You know, what are the cells like? What are they? What's their name? It's the demon's name. Then where are the demons, right? The staging, like where is it? Mm -hmm. So you have what and where and stage is where. Like, is it in the lung? Is it in the liver? Is it some right. of the lymph nodes? That's the part where like when we stage, we give that material to the pathologist and they say, this is stage blank. Right. And then you can make another prediction. You know, after that, you're like, well, you know, based on the literature we have, here's your mm -hmm. recurrence risk, here's what's long term, but everything's just a prediction. You know, we're we're wrong a lot because the body and cells are very complex. You have an immune system, and right. we our treatments constantly evolve too. We actually have hit immunotherapies now coming into more norm. We're getting more mainstream, and the results when people respond to that are miraculous. You know, so. And what I like about this field is, first of all, I like female patients because I hate guys like you, but, uh, <laughs> you know, know-it-alls or freaking yeah. fancy thought. No, women are great. Women are great patients. They're really, they're really great patients. They're just fantastic to take, take care of. And the, the, the field I chose has a lot of hope in it because the things we do work. So that's one of the things that attracted me to it is like, number one, I like taking care of women. Number two, um, the stuff we do actually isn't like, you're doomed and we're, you know, mitigating it. We get that. Right. But oftentimes we actually win those battles. So it's it's wow. it's a great field to be in. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's great. Cool. So that I, is great. I'm gonna ask you a question. I know the answer is it depends, but as a guy as an expert, how are we doing with cancer? Well, it's it's actually pretty amazing. So we have um, two classes of drugs that I'm like immunotherapy like I mentioned, and then another one that deals with DNA salvage and repair. So these things call uh, polyadenosine ribose uh, PARP inhibitors, uh, they, they, they basically um, are, a, they, they target the salvage pathway that messed up cancer cells have to use to go make more DNA. Mm -hmm. So you can take these pills after we do, say, ovarian cancer, after they get an operation, they could take these pills and suppress growth for like years uh -huh. and sometimes win. And so it's changed everything. And uh -huh. this is in the last 
five or so years. Uh And then the immunotherapy has become got FDA labels in just like the last couple years. And when people respond to that, some, some of the studies haven't reached full survival. So like both of those, we're seeing these long-term responders we didn't see just a few years ago. It seemed like Im- immunotherapy was really hit and miss and often miss. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you explain guys, what is immunotherapy? Okay, oh, so the, what yeah. we're talking about particularly Duh. No. <laughs> are, well, there's, I, there's I a totally couple. Lost. I have You're no totally idea what's going on. Cancer bad. Uh, yeah. Cancer bad. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I wore a cancer brace. So that's as, as far as my knowledge goes. Well, right? you know, this it's not it's not a mystery. It's ba- basically, so there's a lot of, uh, when, when tumor cells live in you, right? They're your cells but they're messed up and they don't have growth restriction and they don't know where to stay, right? So they end up in these different places. Then they have metabolic processes that happen that may make you sick. So a lot of people have tumors and they're not doing anything. They're just there. And a lot of people have tumors that are progressing and growing into things, obstructing things, doing stuff like that. And then a lot of them that are secreting something that makes you sick. Okay. So those are all the possibilities. But the immunotherapy that's been most effective is really, really interesting because What is immunotherapy? It means using your own immune system to attack those cells as foreign now. Because your own immune system knows when a virus or COVID comes in and it recognizes it and it surrounds it, attacks it, blah, blah, blah. But the trick is, why does your immune system attack and kill cancer cells. Well, it's because they're self-cells is the problem. So we need to teach immune cells how to recognize cancer cells as foreign and need to be eliminated. Gotcha. Sorry. See, you would be a great medical host. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and, that's Dr. Exactly, Oz. and that's that's exactly it. So we now have antibodies that can go after the immune recognition molecules that are being blocked by the cancers. The cancers are actually telling the local surrounding tissue, no, 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 we're one of you. Oh, right, 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 right. And now we have these antibodies. You know, PDL one and PD one is the you know the the actual. Oh yeah, receptor. you've yeah. heard of this, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. PD two, so, PD three. Anyways, it takes. we always have stupid abbreviation not n- names for like everything, so you have to remember this l- salad of wor- of like just abbreviations. Yeah, right. But anyhow, uh, the these these immune markers are shut down, and the immune cells are quiescent, or they don't do anything. But when you give these people these drugs, suddenly they're on mass and like whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not supposed to be here. Oh, uh, okay. And so okay. we're getting responses like 20 some odd percent. So it's a drug 13 that to 20 un- some odd percent. That unmasks the cancer. It unmasks the cancer. Okay. And now suddenly you're like, Whoa, no. Gotcha. And then it clears it. Yeah. You know, it's pretty amazing. Great. So oh, man. That's you're all, saying that's... 15 to 20 percent? Uh, it's around there. I'm like sure it, it depends, it, though. It depends. It really does depend on, you know, the person or whatnot. We don't know what why some people respond to anything and others don't. You know, we don't really know. We just know we have a population that might respond. Mm-hmm. So that's how all studies are done. We have, right. you know, 500 people and we did this and it seemed to work for this percentage of people with this kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Let's try to apply that to people. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Right. Have you dealt with any, I know there's, they're coming up with therapies where the viruses are packaged to target certain things. Or have you dealt yeah. with any of that kind of stuff? Is any of that well, kind of it's, promising? Well, ironically, that was what my project was as a fellow and it was a total dismal failure. But there are, there are things like that that are happening. They're not mainstream in my field yet. Uh-huh. So none of that's going on for me. But the immunotherapy you think promising. Oh, well, it's already has been. So just recently we have one for endometrial cancer and there's also immune linked target molecules that carry a chemotherapy with them. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing that's been happening. We tried that for years and years and years. There's one that came on the market now <laughs> that may actually show that for folate receptors. So it's mm-hmm. a drug immunomarker combo. It, it gloms on the cell and then the cell takes in the drug and it's done. Right. So there's that. But the responses aren't like um, they're not a number. The number of people responding is not amazing, but the responders are amazing. Uh huh. No, that's okay. the thing. It's like when you get that, you're seeing things we never saw before. And right. you've dealt with that in your own practice. You've actually yes. administered Im- immunotherapy. No, I don't administer it, but I know about it. And when I talk to my medical oncologist, we collaborate. Right. And we say, Hey, what are you going to do? This is that's right. Because you're basically a surgeon. I guess I'm yeah. saying so, you've had so, personal yeah. success, personal experience with people who've been successful. Yes. In the, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. that's great. That's yeah. exciting. That's yeah, great. totally. It's, it's still, very cool. It's yeah. yeah, it's like still new but very exciting. Yeah. But it also keeps you, you know, when you a, a lot of the problems with with modern societies were were sterilized from bad, you know, a lot of things. You know what I mean? You're dealing with your dad now, we get that. You yeah. know, people get that all the time. Yeah. But I mean, in the old days, people had bodies in their like, you know, foyer for people to come from all around and see. Death was all around us. But now, you know, nobody expects it. So it's just such a shock to people when something like this happens. It's like, well, I was great. I was eating vegan and, you know, doing this and doing this. And now this happened to me. I'm like, right, right. 
Yes. <laughs> that's life? Is that what you're yeah, saying? It's, or, it's, that's yeah. unfortunately, it's like a car yeah. accident. You know, like none of us expect driving down the freeway in the rain, we're going to get killed. But any one of us driving out of this room, could. We could be done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. We just don't think about it. And right. yet I see that all the time. And to me, it gives me a good perspective on, on how like joyful you should be that every day you wake up. You know, I mean, I really am. It's like my patients give me that. They give me that feeling of like, you know, I should appreciate it and not sweat the little things. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But. That's awesome. That's That's great. Cool. What a great story. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about now the fact that you used to be in the offspring and, and your patients know this somehow because of the internet. They, they know that you're in the band. <laughs> and actually, I want to talk about the fact, well, we used to do a song called Beheaded, right? And Beheaded's actually <laughs> off our first album, right? right. Beheaded. I think it was probably influenced by Code Blue. We wanted our own Code Blue, yeah. right? Yeah, so, that's what you said when you wrote it. And, and yeah. I wrote the music, and it's. I think to this day, it's the only song that I've ever collaborated on lyrics with anybody. James and I sat down, and we we did the lyrics together, and we were just cracking ourselves up. Ah, what, what a ridiculous thing to say, you know. Watch you spurt like a garden hose. Like, it's very graphic, but very yeah. ridiculous, right? It's supposed to be that way. Yeah. <clears throat> but I just thought of the the interesting uh, 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 contradiction or whatever or put put together of you being a doctor who wrote a song called Beheaded, right? How that I wonder if that could be a problem with anybody, right? And, it and, never has been. <laughs> yeah. Until no. now. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Until yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it never has been. I mean, it's just everyone knows it's art, you know, and everyone knows the ridiculousness of the right. past. And everyone Your knows Your patients aren't concerned going, I got this new doctor. He wrote yeah. this song called yeah. Beheaded, but I think everyone says he's good. Is, now, well, isn't also, the song pretty about, clear? It's tongue in cheek though. It's if it's, you don't know that's you know, tongue in yeah, cheek, yeah, totally. then yeah. oh, you'd be surprised what people don't I think you know understand. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about your parents? The first time you guys played that song for your parents, mommy doesn't have her head anymore. <laughs> like, your mom, mom, check out the song I just wrote. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, oh, no. Were, our mothers, no, no. Our mothers yeah. were always the whole time were messing with them growing up. They uh, knew. They're like, yeah. yeah, okay, another one of your, you're just <laughs> yeah. trying to pull my string and push my buttons. <laughs> right. I get okay, it. All right. Nothing yeah. you can say or do is shocking anymore, <laughs> son. I, I never played it for my mom. Your mom, I think, had a sense of humor <laughs> more than my mom did. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so how is it with your patients and the fact that you had a history uh, with the band? They they love it. I mean, the ones that recognize it love it, right? They. I, I, I know mean, you it, sent us something recently where a, a, a patient was a big fan, and I think they kind of waited till like after surgery, and like the first thing she said after surgery is, "Can I get your autograph?" I uh, know, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that, yes, and that's like mine. Yeah. Why me? I don't have anything to do with the success you are glomming on to me. Nothing. <laughs> So <laughs> that's awesome. You know, but yeah, there's like, for instance, now, like just, there's a story, you know, I've got this merch in the room to sign yep. that there's a kid that came to our show named Julian, who was at our show that I played at. And so he ah, was right texting his grandmother and saying, Hey grandma, I'm seeing the show. And you know, James Lilia is playing on stage. And, and he, she said, James Lilia, that's, that's my surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> so she Dr. and this and and Julian is a mad fan of yours. I sent you the little video of him in the office with me because she yeah. brought him to the office, right. yeah. and he said, "Would you sign this for me?" I said, "Well, you know, I'll do more than that. I'll I'm going to go down here. I'll bring this stuff with me. Oh, Maybe great. you'll sign yeah, it yeah, for him, cool. right? You know, cool. We'll that's awesome. Yeah, that's and he's just awesome. and I sent you the video, you know, of him saying, oh, "I'm Julian." You know, it's like pretty cool. Right. And so he's 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 thrilled, and so that's what I'm saying. People like it. I mean. They like it. You yes. once told me you said like I can't go like a week without somebody coming to the oh, office. Oh no, going, you can't. Aren't you the fur? Aren't you the guy? And you're like, you know, no one thanks me or recognizes me for the decades of work <laughs> I did in biology or the countless lives yeah. I saved. But they're fascinated by the fact that I was once in the offspring in the yeah. in the eighties. Oh no, I've had that where literally I'd be in the room, patient sitting over here, husband's there, and the husband starts talking about this. I'm. Uh, <laughs> do we want to talk about your wife's the, cancer? The stage right. three cancer. Do we want to talk yeah. about this problem first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now a little more pressing you know, over here. Yeah, I now think, uh, what I did forty years ago. Right? It's like so it's, it's just one. He's like, yes, it's true. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah. Glad you like that. You now, know. I don't know if you want to talk about this, but you made some news about five years ago, right? You were kind of in the news for news? Sa for saving a life that was not a, not one of your patients in you trial. Oh, to, you want to talk yeah, yeah, story? yeah. Oh, yeah. We should we should tell this story. It's pretty yeah. weird. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's really a, bizarre. Yeah. So we get to court. It's in Oakland, 
right? Because it was in Alameda County that we did the procedure. All right. And there's a riot outside. You know, like, there's a riot. I don't know what it's for, but I, I there's a riot outside the courtroom. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> protesting something. It's Oakland. It's Oakland. I don't, it's Oakland. Probably the Raiders won or <laughs> lost or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And, and you see, and I was so naive at the time that when I went to court, I thought, you have your day in court, and I'm so naive and stupid. I thought you're there for a day. It's over. You don't want to answer this question. Oh, we're done. Right, right, right. No, you have to do a jury selection first and it takes days. <laughs> and I didn't know that. So when they first show my, my lawyer, a guy named Barry Marsh, one of the finest minds I've ever known. He's a brilliant guy. He was like, you thought this was going to take a day? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Barry, I didn't know. He's like, isn't it obvious? It won't, oh, isn't that obvious? So, and so I had to cancel all these cases. I had cases the next day, the next day, the next oh, day. I canceled my all week. Oh, man. And so we're in this courtroom. The paralegal he has with him is an ex-ICU nurse and ER nurse. It's his paralegal. She switched careers. And so we're in the middle of this court thing. We're selecting people. And it's it's ridiculous. Like, they have these people. You know, you fill out your, your court form, like, all these things. Like, one of the guys fills out this form says, I hate doctors. I hate hospitals. I hate everyone. And <laughs> he I wants will, to be out of there. Yeah, he well, just wants to go home. I don't know. He's there. <laughs> yeah. And then the judge is like, you'll say, well, okay, I know you hate doctors and you hate hospitals <laughs> and you hate everything in the medical field and you want to cut everyone's throat. But can you put that aside yeah, for and make this a case <laughs> yeah. and judge this separately from that? And I'm like going... Where am I? You know, this is not real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so first I learned it's not my day in court. Then I get this. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. And so what had happened was while we were outside, the same thing you were talking about, a court reporter comes up to Barry, who knows him, my lawyer, and says, hey, Barry, what's going on? He says, oh, she's a court reporter, blah, 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 blah. Huge Offspring fan. <laughs> well, lucky you. The court reporter. Huge huh? Offspring oh, wow. fan. She comes to the room to write a story, because I didn't know this either, being so dumb, anyone can walk in a civil case and just sit down and listen, write okay, things right. down, whatever they want to do. Right. So there she is, going to write an article, X drummer from the offspring sued for malpractice. Uh, oh, boy. Right. right? And I'm like, oh, my God. And she's in there, and I'm like thinking, oh, this sucks. This sucks so bad. So when you say court reporter, she wasn't like the, the court reporter, like recorder. Sorry. Right? Yeah, I so maybe, she's, she's a reporter, she's a reporter for, for, for the court. But she writes she for this thing called Law 360. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, she, yeah, I'm sorry. She's yeah. a journalist. A journalist. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live under a rock. I don't know what people's jobs uh, are. So help me when I. It's a great doctor. Play. Terrible law. law. <laughs> yes. Terrible at yeah. law. So you're, you're just thinking this is extra attention I don't need, right? Oh, I'm thinking yeah, right. this is horrible. Yeah. You know, I mean, my right. God, how's this going to go? And, you know, I figure once you're in the court system, you're the public's chew toy, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so, anyhow, this. Then we're in the courtroom, we're selecting people, I'm listening to these ridiculous statements, and one, we're going for recess, and the door's open, and one of the bailiffs or sheriffs or something pokes his head and says, hey, just so you know, there's a man down outside, you know, just so you know. And I figured they meant outside, outside. So we get up, and we're wandering out, and there's this crowd with legs sticking out. We're like, the nurse and I look at each other and go, oh in the, my God. In the courtroom. In the, in the hallway. In the hallway. Right, outside, right outside the door. The door. Okay, I thought yeah. they meant outside. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we go out there and, and, I, and I figured someone got beaten to death or something, like man down, meaning you know they're bloody or something. Right. So the guy had cardiac arrest. So we went down and I'm feeling his neck and he's got no pulse. So we started doing CPR and then we were yelling them, call, activate the EMS system, 911, you know, that stuff. And they bring over the um, AD, you know, the they automatic defibrillator. The defibrillator yeah. yeah, external defibrillator. So we put this thing on him. We're pumping his chest, breathing for him. And then we shock him. He had a shockable rhythm, which, you know, these things detect. So they're, 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 they're run by a computer. They look at stuff and say, this is something we should shock him. We're like, okay, we're getting ready to shock him. And he comes back. Comes you know? back. You literally so get a pulse. You save this guy's life. So, but it gets better. <laughs> in front of the jurors. In, in, front, in front of the, the journalists. Yeah. Uh-huh. In front of the, yeah, in front, in front of, of everybody. In front of all the jurors, in front of oh, the journalists. It sounds like you're a hero. It gets so much better. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then, you know, they come and take him away, and we go this, back to but, the courtroom. But, but, let's just stop, stop, though, for a second, and ima- how amazing, and what a, a crazy twist of fate this is. The, know, the, yeah. the <laughs> odds that this would happen to yeah. anybody ever in your life, ever, anywhere, and it just so happens to happen right in the middle where you're getting trial for malpractice right. yes and then the irony the irony oh, more irony that. while a riot's going on outside <laughs> more irony he's one of my jurors <laughs> he is one of the jurors he is one of wow. my jurors being selected right that is awesome does he still hate doctors <laughs> I, well actually i don't know who I, no it's I not, it's not that. i don't think it was i don't think it was that guy but i don't know who it was yeah, yeah. but it's it was one of the jurors one of the actual jurors oh. 
So we get back insane. into the courtroom and I see my lawyer and the other lawyer with the judge in the front. I'm like, oh no, this is not going to, we're not going to finish. I just canceled a week of patience and we're going to do this again. Like, oh my God. So then I, you know, she comes out and says, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to cancel this case because, you know, this happened. And like, so nobody knows we do CPR. Nobody knows we shock hearts. This is like, it's <laughs> yeah. an unknown fact in the general public. Why is this, why is this contaminating this case? I don't get it. Carry on. Yeah. Your, your lawyer, of course, didn't want this. So it was the opposing lawyer that says, mistrial. Yeah. This, yeah. 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 Mistrial. Yeah. These jurors are obviously going They're to be- They're contaminated. He, this doctor helps people. <laughs> yeah. 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 This ruins my narrative. <laughs> how, yeah. How can I possibly prosecute this case now that he saved a life? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, it's like, this yeah. is not known. And, and the judge <laughs> bought it and said, And the yep. judge says, yep, we're done. And so like, yeah. oh God. So then Would this that is, be a mistrial? Is that what happened? Is that what yeah, it was it? a mistrial. Mistrial. So then I knew, I mean, this is already like three, <laughs> two and a half years into this, right? Yeah, two and a half yeah. years for this to happen. Like what, what kind of system do we have? How dare you save that guy in the hall, you know? Well, you got so, to reschedule your appointments that you <laughs> scheduled out. Uh, sort of. Silver lining. Lose <laughs> half of them. You know, it's him. Yeah, but yeah. I did. I get to like rearrange and we put things on and all that, you know, but that was so great. So what you should have done is walked by the guy, said loser and kicked him and then just kept going, <laughs> right? Well, then the trial would have kept going, yes. <laughs> yeah, then the trial would have been. Oh my still God. Probably would Alternate have juror would have stepped in. Now, yeah. there, are, there are other weird stories like that I've had traveling, but that's different. I don't know what's, there used to be that people go down when I was around and it was like, what am I doing? I mean, I'm in Costa Rica. What the hell? So you've resuscitated people more I, than I once. have. Right. And it's weird. I'm a gynecologic oncologist. Yeah. I've resuscitated, well, either assisted, one was resuscitation, two more were just assists for people that were down. Three yeah, times before this. You just attract wow. that energy. Yeah. I know. It's horrible. They somehow but know that subconsciously they can. I remember seeing. Now is the time to get injured. Yeah. And die. Or, yeah. Almost die. I remember seeing a guy have a heart attack at a uh, baggage claim one time after a long flight. I remember from that too. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I just heard this woman screaming. And at first I just thought she was, I didn't get it. And then I realized, oh shit, no, her husband's down. It's something. And it didn't yeah. look good. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a story like that. In their history. drummer did nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Just stood there. Hey, okay, you guys need you guys need an upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> we are so pissed at him too. Yeah. You know? yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah. This is what you do. Hey, get in Go. there. Get in there. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I trust that the subsequent trial uh, worked out. Everything worked out okay. So and... well, it's even weirder. So oh, then, okay. at this time, we go back and I'm like, "What do we do now?" And then I hear that the plaintiff is going to go to binding arbitration now instead. So it was on James Corden's monologue. It was, yeah, yeah, that's right. it was in yeah, Mexico right. City, major newspaper, <clears throat> London, really? wow, People wow. Magazine. Yeah. This explodes, right? And I'm sitting at home and my wife calls me and says, how do these reporters have my cell phone? What the hell happened? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, reporters are calling me. Reporters are calling me about you. And I'm like, what? They are? And so I said, I don't know. Don't answer anything. You know, so we answered nothing. And it's so weird. They had all our cells. And they were calling and calling and calling and calling, and you know we weren't going to talk about it. You or did have the one good quote. Do you remember what you said? Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. When they told me that um, you know the case was being you know it was a mistrial, yeah. I said no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, the- that's right. I truer that. words, truer words. Yes. Right. So we end up, you know, she did not want to be back in a courtroom where you can walk in and everyone be a big circus. She didn't want any part of that. Then we ended up inviting arbitration. Went very quickly. And so, you know, they had to pay our court costs and all that. Wow. But I mean, wow. there's how many people did I not get to see from all this time? Like I had to go to all these courtrooms and all this stuff and like cancel a day and right. people had to wait yeah. for stuff. And, you know, it's just, you never know how uncertain it's going to be. You can't keep going. And that's not fun. No, it's, and we got people yeah. all the time. And, and this was at a time I was solo. I didn't have a partner. Right. So it was like one of those oh, little right. interregnums that he didn't have a partner. And so I was like, it's business, all just me. Partner you're talking about. Right? Well, another yeah, yeah. GYN oncologist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. there's always been at least two of us. Okay, and right. Yeah. Hopefully there'll so be three. So you can cover but... for each other when, yeah. Yeah, when you, one of you has to be in court. Right. You know? yeah. And Caitlin, if you're listening, take the job. Um, so yeah, we, we offered somebody a job last Monday. <laughs> well, I'm glad that decades later we could still help. And, but you know, it reminds me in the musician world, musician world, at least they say, you know, you're successful when you know how to spell the word subpoena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. yeah. Yeah. You already knew, I'm sure. Yeah. But that applies, I guess, obviously yeah. either of your professions. Next, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just wild, right? I mean, that whole. That whole system is wild, you know. Yeah. You, I mean, I guess you have to have it so we don't all kill each other, you know. And you did wrong to me, right. so I'm going to come right. kill you. You know, at least we have some forum for that. But it's wild. The whole process is 
I never knew, you know, how lengthy it is to answer right, a simple right. question. You know, well, you'd think that all was answered and all the work leading up to it. So can we just have someone look at it and go, yeah, that doesn't sound reasonable. <laughs> That's yeah. bullshit. Get it out of here. You know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Wow. Wow. What, 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 what a life you've had. <laughs> I know that that, that, cool, right? yeah, that that just the whole odds of everything, man. It's just well, that's why it went all over as a news story. Yeah. You know, it, just... it, it sounds like an episode of Sunny in Philadelphia, right? Like it just the whole thing is just comical yeah. from the surgery <laughs> to the court yeah. To but the... when you're living it, though, I no, thought yeah, my yeah, career yeah, totally. was over at the yeah. time. I was like, I'm done. You know, this has gone all over the world. You know, Lilia malpractice. Well, that's right. all yeah, I read. Right, you don't even right. want the name, your name associated. Right. With that it's word. like, right. what the yeah, hell? Yeah, yeah. You don't know the story, and they're never going to yeah. know the story. You know. And yeah. but people were amazingly, like you said, you know, talked about, you know, people saying, "Oh, you made this song." People overlooked it. It's just nobody, well, I think, nobody I held think it against. You me. Also saved a guy's life. Yeah. That was the <laughs> that was the main. You yeah. Know, that, like, the proof is yeah, in the pudding. Don't bury you the lead, James. Don't bury the lead. be an automatic get out of jail free card. Automatic, right? Well, it all came around full circle because then you you joined us on stage uh, just gee, just last summer. Just right? yeah. last summer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was last, fun. Last summer was we, so did, cool. we did a big U.S. tour, which was awesome. It was the biggest tour we've ever done, right? right. Which was great. And James said, uh, can I play with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was something like that. <laughs> well, a long time ago, you said, you said a long time ago, you said, yeah, why don't you sit in with us sometime? I'm like, okay. And I like, you know, yeah, I like, wasn't serious. Like, bye bye. You know, like, and so then well, when, we when you came back, nice. you said, and then I said to you, well, you said when you came up to San Jose that I should ask to sit in with you. being polite. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun when you said you wanted to do it. We got in here. We, yeah. we rehearsed a couple times. That was fun. Through it. Yeah, that yeah. actually was so stressful for me. You have no idea. When I came in here and play drums with you guys. Really? That was stressful? Well, I'm sitting there playing. You guys are experts, right? I, I, I do this on the side. Are you kidding? <laughs> right? I mean, literally, like chicken for you're insane <laughs> experts <laughs> like at what you do, yeah. right? You you will notice everything, you know? Be like us sitting in on a surgery with you. Well, it's like, right? Any <laughs> manual, hey, a manual skill that you've been doing for decades? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. no, I get it. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah, yes, yeah. you're yeah. really, really good at this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. that was super, super stressful coming down here. Well, it was fun. It was fun. You, yeah. You had I mean, family. I had fun once you were here. Yeah. You guys made me feel really good about it. Like, you were yeah. very forgiving. Oh. You uh, had a bunch of family and friends out that night. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what was their take on it? Well, I bought a block of tickets for people, you okay. know, that just to, so they could show up. And some people bought them, some people didn't, you know. That's whatever. why we agreed to let you in. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I told you I'd be, <laughs> for the ticket sales. I told yeah. you I'd be value add. Sold out. Yeah. Sold out nice. Yeah. <laughs> it worked the last time, right? Yeah. Yeah, it worked the it last time. It worked with chicken. Tastes yeah. like chicken. Yeah. No, they, they loved it. They Good. loved yeah. it. I Good. mean, they loved it. Nice. And so, yeah, it was just great. I mean, your and wife I, and kids were like, "Yeah, oh no, they 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 loved it." It was well, probably the only thing my kids ever respected me for. Is <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that? Yeah. yeah, it was a fun moment. It was really it cool. Really it was, was really cool. cool. Was well, cool. as a fan, it was really cool to see. But like a lot of the older fans, just to see it online, I wasn't there. But yeah, to watch the video, everybody just. Absolutely love it. it was that was so the, much fun. the video of that night that, yeah. that went viral. Oh yeah, and sure. finally yeah. my daughters might think I'm cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like when Weird Al covered <clears throat> Pretty Fly did Pretty Fly for a Rabbi. All of a sudden my daughter was like, "Wow, Dad, you're like you're like in a real band." Yeah, <laughs> Weird Al put him over the edge. Yeah, totally. Right? Isn't life weird? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. Well, uh, kids, yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 No, no, the perspective yeah. of, you know, how they, your kids look at you. They keep and... you humble, don't they? Yes. Yeah, for yes, sure. Yes, they do. Yeah. Well, there it is, right? Yeah. Cool. Dude, it was great. Great having you. It was oh, yeah. awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank I you think we could ex- probably we could probably go yeah. on. Maybe come back again some other time. All right, yeah. I'll do that. I'm it's just fun. being polite. No, I'm just. Uh, kidding. <laughs> 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 now there's other stuff. I'm sure there's other stuff we could talk about. We can go. We go back even further, right? Right. Right. Think of stuff. Yeah. Um. Save it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll shamelessly ask you to do it again. Of course. I mean, I really don't have yeah. any shame, as you probably have determined at this point. Uh, it the, was the really... Madame Wong's thing. That was great. You brought that up. I totally forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It was really great to have you. It's great to yeah. see you again. You know, uh, we all we go through life, and you know, our friends from the past often don't stay our friends. You know, and it's great after right. all this time and yeah. after being in a band together and having. You know, things go different ways that we've come back and we're still friends and it's great to see you. So, well, I mean, you guys are also very normal people. You know, you don't you don't have any of the weird 
stardom stuff that makes you not human anymore. You know, we I mean, don't hang out that much anymore, do we, James? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah. think I think for the most part, yeah, we haven't changed much. No, since, no, since you, you really, were, honestly, you, you really us. haven't. Yeah. I mean, you guys oh. are just like down to earth, yeah. solid people. You know, yeah. I second that. Nice. Except for you, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's I'm, out there. This, this is my new like. He's I, out there. As normal as I get. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. but, I know, man. Thank All you. Right. We'll Thank see you. you. We'll yeah. see you again. Take care, James. Nice right to meet on. you.